Hi, it's Esty. Mm -mm. uh, someone asked me, oh, when do you think it's a good time for me to collaborate with someone else for the first time? My honest opinion is if you are a design lab student, I think the best time for you to try collaborating with someone is after you finish your first capstone project. In design lab, you're kind of um, working in two different phases. And so you have phase one and you have phase two. And phase one in its entirety, it's kind of like a slow process of you learning the design process while also learning by doing. The model is to learn as you go. You're given three different prompts and you're told to select one of those prompts and as you're working towards that prompt, you're learning about the design process. So every phrase that you're reading about, you're watching, I don't know, tutorial videos on, then you're implementing what you learn into this case study project that you're doing during phase one. And it's like it's like taking baby steps. You're learning as you go, you're reviewing it with your mentor, etc. And then when you go into phase two, you start working on the projects that either design like gives you or you create your own independent one. Your mentor is kind of giving you a little bit more of a hands-off. Um, saying that, okay, during phase one, you learned about the UX design process. And at this point, Design Lab feels confident to say that you already know the design process for you to be able to execute a case study by yourself. Oh no. Oh no. Of course, you'll still have routinely meetings with your mentor, whether you're a part-time or full-time student. That first case study is kind of like an opportunity, in my opinion, for you to tackle on the UX design process a little bit more of a faster pace and to um, really experiment like within yourself like okay do I really understand it or not and kind of build your confidence about what do you know that you like about the design process and what do you not like or maybe a better way to put it would be like what are your strengths and what are some areas that um, you feel like are a little bit more challenging for you so that you can clarify when you work with a team like hey teammates I'm really good with the UX process. I'm really good with wireframing. So um, just letting you know there. And during, during the two projects that um, I've been working on, I've always asked what part of the design process are you uh, most comfortable with? Are you comfortable with the research, the wireframing, or the UI? I just divided up to three parts because I always had three people in my team and it was easy to segregate the roles that way. But um, with that said, just like kind of ask like what part are you do you have a preference and with that preference is it is it because you're good at that or is it just because you want to improve on that and if you're in design lab before you try to like just get anyone or create a create a collaboration team always check with your mentors make sure they're okay with it always double check with your mentor if it's okay for you to collaborate and I think the big thing is that always prepare a presentation PowerPoint every week you're done and to kind of just give your mentor an overview of what you've done so far. Um, that's really important, I think, because it not only gives you clarity of what you've done so far with your team, you can always refer back to it. And I think it's such a seamless way to inform your mentor of what you've done. Um, so yeah, I love PowerPoints now. It has all of my collected data on it and it's so easy to present in such a aesthetic way. For me at least every week just end it with um, creating presentation because it kind of gives me a chance to kind of uh, review how the week was like. Actual first project you do in phase one is kind of like the guinea pig, you know, you're kind of demoing and trying things out. Look at Capstone 1 as like your opportunity to like really see how you can tackle on a project which is like a responsive website as a brief um, and see for yourself if you really know it and you can get, gain more confidence that you can do it. And then when you move on to Capstone 2, Design Lab had it where uh, for me at least it was adding a feature like choosing an existing company or product that you can add a feature to. Um, and I created my own individual one, which is hence the crunchy roll that I made a video about. <laughs> After you finish Capstone 1, use maybe like Capstone 2 as a great opportunity to collaborate with other people because if you really think about it, just kind of imagine if I wanted to work with a company, then they already have a product and I'll be working obviously with like some 
teammates. But, um, adding a feature, I feel like um, you would be working with a lot of other people and you would also have your own team because you know the company already has a product for you and so i kind of just took it as like a real life case scenario or a hypothetical life case scenario of course and then um created a team for it and with that said i feel like i was able to confidently say that i am very good at research so far i have all of my teammates say that after they have done all their research deliverables with me and have worked with me, they learned a lot and yeah, like the way I do it, they say it's a lot clearer than the way um, they have done it. So I'm super, super thankful to like my first mentor, <laughs> even though he was really difficult, a man, like he knew what he was doing. He was a professor at Stanford. I am so thankful <laughs> for him. <laughs> Um, he, I learned a lot and so in that sense too like credits to him for all of the compliments I've gotten about like help like showing my research process and then kind of getting all of my friends on board to do the same and bringing clarity as to like why this user is like this, why their preferences are like this, why their needs are like this, frustrations, goals, etc. <laughs> like the moment when my teammates were like oh my god like this is actually like a lot better like than what I was doing and this is actually like a lot more clear like I know exactly why our persona is like this and I'm like yes 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 yeah! every little detail that you include in your persona has to reflect back to research so this is how you do it and I'm super glad <laughs> maybe we can start by going over the um agenda on notion okay. um just to see like where we're all at yeah so i kind of rescheduled everything with the dates um kind of guesstimating uh how long it might take us so i did schedule for us to finish up to the mid fit today this is kind of like the ideal plan we'll we'll see how far we can get done today but then i know um kelly works this weekend yeah. right I'm basically preparing everything we need in advance by titling each of our Figma pages by dates like Monday, da 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 da. Like I could show you right now. So for example, this is what I did with my um, class. Oh yeah, so if you guys haven't heard this, this is a really, really cool um, platform. This is kind of like Zoom, but you guys meet each other in a game and it's a little your own community. It's called um, Gather. Oh, I deleted it, sorry. But it's called, I deleted the URL because I was gonna type something, but it's called gather.town. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so you can click on Monday. So I had made one for Monday. I created a presentation for my team. I screenshotted it, copied and pasted the design goals and the case study um, here, encircling this to make sure that we remember. And I also wanted to make sure that we have some kind of, a little bit more of like a advanced thinking where we can think about the future, like how can we create this app to be sustainable three to five years in the future? Like what are we trying to predict? Like for example, like what if like another pandemic hits us again? Like how can we create this app to still be um, relative during that time, still have value during that time? Um, yeah. <laughs> So I put in the template here and all we needed to do was just transfer this from our empathy map and then um, we finished that and I put in an arrow to say like, okay, next we need to finish this, which is our how might we statements. And just in case I kind of typed in what POV means, it's basically our needs plus you use the word because to add the word want for your insight. From, so yeah, and then how might we is basically how might we and then help plus help the users need and keep going down for our next one i included i basically used three frames where what each person has their own row and each column is a how might we question so each row is this person so it's this one's jay's this one's kelly's and this one's mine I decided to spend three minutes on each how might we question to ideate on our own and after that we grouped our ideas together and we created categories of all of our similar ideas and once we finished that 
we ended with our user goals. Oh, I basically provided this template. All we needed to do as a team was to like fill the, in the blanks. So bye. Girl, you make me go so loco, loco, make me go crazy. We would make a beautiful baby. Knock on wood, is you trying to date me? Is it yes, is it no, is it maybe?